Hello and welcome back to our software topic and let's have a look at what we've gone and covered already. Well here is our software topic and the first thing we looked at was program software. That's program software such as operating system and as you would have guessed the programming software is going to be able to get our computer up and running. Then we looked at utility software. Utility software, its job is to maintain our computer. And we've looked at these types of utility software. Antivirus, anti-malware, defragmentation and file compression. So that's going to bring us on to our final area of software. And this is application software. We are most familiar with this type of software because it gets us to be able to do things, to be able to complete tasks. There are, there are lots and lots of different types of application software, but three of the most recognisable ones are word processing, spreadsheets and databases. We're going to be spending a little bit of time looking at each of these. Word processing is probably the most common and most used piece of software anyone uses. Certainly in school, we start with it in, in year seven, you will have had a look at it in primary school, and it's the one piece of software that you will use regularly all the way through. Word processing comes in lots of different packages. Well, for Microsoft we use Word, in Apple we use Pages, and in the Libra base software, which we have, we can use Writer Document. For Word, and I am sure also in these as well, we have these features. Spell Checker, which obviously is there to correct our spelling. The Thesaurus, which is used to extend our vocabulary and to give us other options. We can create tables, use graphics, and there are lots and lots of different features that can be used. And you would know already a great number more than what's on the whiteboard. There are features to be able to help um, groups to collaborate on a document. So track changes and reviewing allows one person to be able to show what changes they've done. They can then send that off. The next person can see those changes and can make their own opinion. Eventually it comes back to whomever, they can see all of the changes that, that are being proposed and then that person can make a final decision. Word is great in that it is able to produce all of these templates. So we can create banners, newsletters, brochures, envelopes, letters, CVs, and there are a few others as well which aren't down there. But it is readily available, we can be able to edit any of these templates to be able to produce whatever we want. And of course we have the humble Word document, where we generally open up and that's the document we would use to create and to write our assessments. So let's have a look at spreadsheets. Spreadsheets is again a very common application software that we use and companies have come up with various types of application software regarding spreadsheets. Now with word processing you were using letters, spreadsheets were using numbers. Excel will use, Microsoft will use Excel, Apple will use numbers and LibreOffice uses something called Calc Spreadsheet. All of them do very similar things. So for example, we can display graphics in the form of charts, such as pie charts, column charts, uh, and a whole range of other charts as well. And they're really useful for us to be able to understand the data. It's a lot easier for us to look at uh, pictures rather than large masses of, of numbers. Functions are inbuilt equations. We would be familiar with a number of these, such as sum, average, min, max, but there are many, many others as well. Statistical analysis is where we can really start to see spreadsheets such as Excel come into their own, where they can look at massive amount of data 
and then be able to show us patterns and relationships within that data. Calculations can be a lot more complicated than ones that we've done, such as adding and taking away. It can show us depreciation, i.e. how much a certain good is going to be worth over a period of time. Take, for example, a car. How much is a car going to be worth from when we bought it to when we want to sell it, say, in five to ten years? And we're taking in a whole range of factors to find us what the price would be. This would be depreciation. Rates of pay. How much are people going to earn depending on various factors? And the same thing applies to actually loan repayments. How much are we going to have to pay back over a period of time, whether we're using one type of interest or compound interest. Modelling is again a very powerful way uh, method Excel uses. Modelling can be used with goal seek or scenario and in this case it's looking at what factors can be changed in order to be able to get the result we want. So uh, an example which we've got in one of the exercises is that of hotel renovation. The hotel has a certain amount of money it can spend. You can change the various factors, whether it be labour costs or maintenance or the number of hotel rooms that they can have. And you can change those factors to be able to meet what or how much uh, the hotel is able to pay. So here we have spreadsheets. Let's go on and look at databases. Here is our final application software. We're looking at databases. Databases for Microsoft is Access and for LibreOffice we use LibreBase. Databases can store small amounts of information or absolutely vast amounts. When storing, for us, we might use it for storing phone numbers, personal details, various collections. I've got down here CD collection, but it can be used for a whole range of different things. Databases can be stored in huge locations and business, or certainly big business, will use the information stored on all their transactions over a period of say 10 years to do some rather clever things with it. So the large businesses can track the products and orders. From that information which is stored it can then go and think about what type of market forces they can do. So they can think about, look at the patterns of people and products and look at branches and various areas to be able to maximise their profits. Databases can also look at historical evidence for, say, weather and analyse that and look at various um, weather patterns and predict what can happen over the years. So databases can store information. When storing, the method to store data, certainly for us, is in the form of forms. So forms can be used to be able to put information into tables. So what is stored in a database is found on tables and how that information can be put in is by using forms. The real power of a database is how well it can interrogate the information. Now when we talk about interrogating we're talking about how well it can search for information. If it takes a long time to search, then that's not very efficient. And more importantly, once it's found something, is that the right information we want? So to be able to search for lots of information on a database, we use things such as queries. By being able to put in the right information or asking essentially the right questions or putting in the right criteria, queries can find the information. So queries are like a filter in that it will hold back what we want and it will let go everything else we, we don't want. 
So queries hold back the information that we want. And queries will help to search for information. Finally, once we have found what we've wanted, it needs to be retrieved. That retrieving is shown in the form of reports. A report is a hard copy which can be printed and then given out. So databases are able to have four main functions. One is using forms to input, two using tables to store that information, finding what we want from those tables we use queries and then to display what we found we use reports. So that would cover what we want to be doing with application software. We've looked at word processing, spreadsheets and databases. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.